Today I will make a little review about the different kind of 125mm uh, frame. So when you choose a frame, there is a few important points uh, to look after. First point is to choose the right uh, size of your frame. You can have a choice between uh, something about 12.4 to 13.3 uh, length for the frame. Uh, it's quite different. Just look for example uh, Takino 12.4 compared to uh, Eoskate 13.2. Um, just have a little look how much difference it looks in the size of the frame, so it's quite important. So for with a longer frame it will be a little uh, easier to find the push and uh, you will have also a slower push, it's also more stable but uh, personally I prefer a shorter frame, something uh, around 12.4 to 12.6 because I like the feeling uh, to be able to move my legs quite fast in the corner, it's also much easier to cross uh, depend on the distance uh, you skate, actually for marathon I would like to use something like 12.6 or 12.8 and for track I think uh, even if you don't have a race on track for training 12.4 is quite cool if you have a marathon mainly with a just straight line and a very big uh, straight line in the finish 13.3 uh, would be cool because it will give uh, much more stability at very high speed so here I took uh, for example uh, so the Takino 12.4 you can see compared to uh, the EOS K 12.6, this will look uh, this much different in the front. 12.8 uh, is a little, little longer, and uh, just right behind you can see the 13.2 uh, from uh, EOS K 2, so you can see the difference in length from the different frame. I look when I choose a frame is the shape of the upper part. Like I look how it, how wide is uh, this part, especially uh, the wider you're gonna have in uh, this part, the slower you will be edge to edge, and the thinner this part will be, the faster you will be edge to edge. So, depend how you like to control your skate. Uh, Sometimes when it's really wide on this part, it's very difficult uh, to make the double push or so because it makes your outside edge. Uh, quite slow so um, one of the widest frame I have uh, skated on so far on 3 uh, three times 125 is um, the Seagull frame it's super wide here which make it uh, quite comfortable but also it's uh, more difficult to do the double push uh, I think one of the best compromise for the shape is probably the power slide one uh, triple X I think it's uh, the best shape for the this part of the frame uh, on some um, other frame you will see, uh, for example, the Bont one is uh, wide in the front, like almost the same as the power slide, but it's very thin at the back. So it also makes it uh, quite difficult uh, to control the outside edge uh, and inside edge. <music> point would be to choose uh, the stiffness stiffness of uh, the frame so you can find uh, some different kind of aluminium or material like uh, carbon for your skate uh, it's big difference between the 6000 aluminium and 7000 aluminium uh, for example the seagull is made of uh, 6000 uh, aluminium which uh, is quite soft it's more comfortable it will give uh, quite a good feeling but uh, you will lose a bit of uh, the push Compared to a uh, better aluminium like the Triple X one, for example, it's a 7005 aluminium, uh, probably one of the best. It's uh, much stiffer and uh, less comfortable, but uh, you will get a better push out of it. Um, one other information you need to look is uh, the number of bridge you got uh, inside the frame. The more 
bigger number of bridge you have inside the frame uh, will make uh, your uh, frame more stiff so you have to count and look uh, how many bridge uh, you have uh, into the frame so for example the, the seagull have almost uh, no bridge just uh, two big one here uh, the roller blade one uh, has uh, also two bridge here and uh, but they are quite wide and um, the Cadomotis one or the o, o skate one they don't have bridge but uh, the conception is uh, quite different they get stiff anyway because of the dual box for the Cadomotis and because of the carbon uh, on the o skate but uh, yeah, if you want to see a difference of stif stiffness between all the other frame uh, just count the number of uh, bridge and the shape of the bridge for example the flight one got a lot of bridge information that uh, could be quite important it's not like uh, the most important uh, data but uh, quite useful anyway is uh, the height of the frame so uh, try to look uh, if there is a uh, one frame lower than another technically uh, I would say that uh, it's a little better to have a lower frame it will go give uh, more feelings for the pressure and uh, for the push it's not 100% uh, sure this information but uh, it's my personal feeling uh, about it um, and uh, also probably the higher frame will make uh, you move a little bit slower. One more detail uh, is about uh, the axle. Uh, it's quite often you can lose uh, some of them. It's very important not to, to use uh, one axle from a uh, brand and put it on another frame because uh, they can be uh, different and uh, most of the reason why people lose their wheel uh, during a training or race or there are also uh, one situation where your wheels get uh, blocked and you cannot take it out is because you're using a uh, an axle that is a different brain uh, that the, your original frame so make sure you have some extra axle and uh, so you can change them because uh, this shape the little uh, uh, thing here this little um, kind of triangular shape here it's uh, specific to almost every brand so make sure you have the right one also the other part the length of the this part is very specific to a different brand so make sure you have the original one <laughs> 